Hello, I'm Laura Furiosi, divorce mother of three, and I'm here with my mother, Lynette Galvin, with 35 years' experience in family law. You're listening to the Divorce Course Podcast. Through our candid discussions, we hope to help you through your divorce or de facto separation. We will be answering the most commonly asked questions and covering the stages and steps that you will face on your way to freedom. Are you feeling completely and utterly overwhelmed at the moment? Well, this episode will be perfect for you. We've got nine ways to take away the overwhelm from your divorce. Welcome, Mum. Hello, Laura. Hi, everyone. Now, after the terrifyingly overwhelming episode we did last week about costs, I think it is a really good idea that we just bring it down and have a look at nine ways that you can fully just take away that overwhelm. Because I think in the moment when you're going through divorce, you're not thinking about your mental health. You're not thinking about how things are going. You And and sometimes a lot of people are just pulling you in directions based on what happens that day. And it's yes. there's, there's, there's no calm seas. It's not like you're going to be doing what you do in your day-to-day life that you've always done. Everything's different. It's yeah, it's all reactions, mm. isn't it? And, mm. and, and if you've just gone through separate, that's hard enough. Yeah. Yeah. Without stepping into this world of of uh, legal stuff mm. that you've never even thought about, mm. you know, no one plans that like no. this sort of stuff. They don't expect it to happen to them, and then when it does, it's it's hard. And to be fair, when you see the Hollywood version of divorce, <laughs> you see one of either two ways. One, it's either they just go into a massive depression and they go under their covers and they're crying, and people bring them food, and and then somehow their world gets better by by miracle or two they go into this revengeies mode and they glam up and they cause revenge for their yes. ex and it's and it's all about getting back at their I'm ex. I'm looking at you bet midler. <laughs> yeah. So there's yeah. there's those two ways but in reality, you know, you're probably a bit of both. You probably want a little bit of revenge which we don't recommend, but you're also probably crying under your covers, but they don't show you're also probably taking the kids to school still. Absolutely. You still got to go to work. You're still, still putting meals on them. Functioning yeah. as a human being in society yes. because you can't unless you're, I don't know, extremely wealthy, just give in and just go to bed. I think that's a teenage girl thing that you could yes. go, go to your room and sob for days while your mother brings you chicken soup. Yes. But no, this is not the real world. So let's have a look at these steps, Mum, and hopefully even if you just take one of these steps away today if you're feeling overwhelmed, even if you're not, even if you're listening to this and you're like, I don't need to listen to this, I've got my life sorted, I'm kicking goals. I've been listening to the divorce course for ages. Maybe <laughs> maybe one of these might just give you a little bit of an extra pep up. Well, and they're also something to keep in, in mind if all hell breaks loose. All hell breaks loose. Yes. You weren't expecting this. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. let's be honest, you go in a divorce, it's not all doom and gloom. You're like, yay, I'm free. And and you start, I don't know, living a different life away from what the reason you separated from the person or the reason they separated from you. There's less fighting in your in your little bubble if you're not separated under one roof. And, and so there are some good things and then you'll get hit by a lawyer letter and then it all goes to hell or something else will happen and it all goes to hell. Yeah. So let's, let's look at this okay. and take these on. So number one, mum, it's obviously take it one step at a time. And I know that there are some really good tips in here, but I want to put that one in for a reason is it can be completely overwhelming to go, oh my goodness, we've got trust, we've got a business, we've got cars in each other's names, we've got a house and a mortgage and I've got, how am I, how are we even going to ever untangle all of this? Yeah. And that's what people must say to you. They do. They do. I can't get divorced. It's too hard. Yes. Or I haven't done anything about it because we're all tied up in the business and mm. can't be untied. There's no situation that can't be resolved. Okay. The court has... What, over the years, like I've said, since 1975, they've worked out ways to do stuff. So okay. it's not as bad as you'd think. Find out where you stand so that you know that you're on a path and just go one One step, step at, a, at time. a time. And I think that's really important. Even if you, you just can't even imagine how this could ever be undone or how you could possibly live by yourself if you, you know, you, if you're mm-hmm. dependent on money or what, what, what's going to happen to the house, what's going to happen to the kids. If you just make one step today is make an appointment to see a lawyer. Yeah, and find out where you stand. And find out where you stand. And oh. that will make you realise, okay, so the lawyer didn't run screaming out of the room when I told him how messy this or her how messy our situation is. Then and it might not be so bad. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And your job, you're not, whatever job you do, whether you're a, a 
a stay-at-home mum at the moment, whether you're a computer programmer or mm. whether you're an electrician, whatever you are, we don't all expect to be able to do your jobs. No. So don't try to second-guess mm. the unravelling until you go and get... And learn about it. Yeah, go yeah. and learn about it. Because if someone said to me, oh, you need to write an app, I would be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how to start that. Whereas my brother, your son, yeah. he'd be like, yeah, I can do that in five seconds. Yes. So, okay. All right. So the next one I want to point out, mum, is it's really important to know where you're going. Even though we've just said, take it one step at a time. Don't look at the mountain. Just look at your feet and take that one mm. step. But the next thing is you want to know where you're going. Yep. Because you'll be completely overwhelmed if you have no idea what happens next. That's exactly right. And how it ends. Yes. So if you know how your story ends and you know the stages you've got to go through to get there, mm. uh, then that's fine. Now you can look at your feet and just, just travel along the path. You've just got to know you're on the right path mm. and then it will happen. Uh, in all my years, I've never found a case that couldn't be mm. sorted out. So, so I think no some business, people no think trust that some, be sorted. some people think, oh, I just go to a lawyer and that that's that's it. That's what happens. But a lawyer really is just if they're writing letters and complaining about things and it's backwards and forwardsing and backwards and forwardsing, that can be really overwhelming. Uh, if you don't know where you're going, if you don't know, like if you're saying, no, I don't want to get into this little nitty gritty stuff. I just want to face forward and get to the end of this. So let's focus on the important issues. Yes. So know what those important issues are? I think so, because otherwise you won't recognise when the red herrings are mm. being sent. All the all the trick letters could kind of, you, you might be particularly wondering about money in a business mm. and you get a letter complaining about something, one of the paintings in the house or or what you, did you scratch the car? Sometimes those letters coming in are meant to distract you. Right. So you've got to know what you want to focus on. Yes. And, yeah. and a really good tip that I think you've said in one of our episodes, and I think it was on... Convincing the unconvincible. Yeah, in the Convincing the Unconvincible, mm. you talked about the best thing to do is to sit down and write two lists write a list of the things you agree on and write a list of the things you don't agree on and write what they want, write what you want. And then in the middle column, that's when you could have, that, that's what Try you're working on. That's all you're working on. That's, Everything else is sorted. Yeah. So you're just trying to figure out and get the information and get an agreement on the things that you don't agree on. So that's nowhere you're going. Know that you've got it to is. get an agreement on those things. So just sit down. If you're there today and this is the only one you want to take on, sit down and write a list. What is it that you do agree on? What is it that you don't agree on? And, and how are you going to get that to the middle? Yeah. And that takes it to number three, being proactive. Yes. So you can be completely overwhelmed if you just are led mm. by the other lawyer or the other the other person. Yes, just so being dragged. What do you mean on. by being proactive, Mum? I, well, it's very easy for me to say. I must say I, I understand how mm. bad it is in those, you know, that early stages. Uh, I don't know that. Everyone has it in them to be proactive, but mm. if you possibly can, start looking at what you can do rather than waiting for the next blow. So initiate conversations with your lawyer if there's a step that you want to take. Ring the bank, mm. get your documents. If you think they're going to say you have to sell the house and you know you can't afford to pay the mortgage, start finding then out. Mm. don't wait for them to, to pull it out from under you. Start planning, okay, I'm going, probably going to have to move at some point. Mm. I'm going to be proactive and start looking. Yes. Or I'm going to be proactive and start packing. I mean, even just those little things. So, yep. You don't want to wait till you get some letter that says you've got to get out within the next 30 days. And then you're like, ah, oh, I've got to get all this done. Whereas you go, oh, this is probably going to happen. Yes. I'm I probably going to have to get started. I which, think you've got to be real. Yeah. yeah. And I think that being real and being proactive proactive is looking at, you know, what is the likely outcome? Go see a lawyer and then start to be proactive about it. Because that's, you know, one of the things I really like to do is stick my head in the sand. <laughs> and that was number five. So we'll jump to that one. We'll go back to number four in a minute. But sticking my head in the sand was something I did a lot because I would get a lawyer letter and I just wouldn't want to open it. I yeah. just did not want to read it. So I'd leave it. I'd leave it for like a week and then read it and go, oh, I should have read that last week. Well, and sometimes it's not as bad as you I think. I know. Sometimes it's just, uh, okay, thanks, Laura. <laughs> and then I'd go, oh, my gosh, I stressed about that for a whole week. Yeah. But, I mean, I've had clients where I know they, they say, I love you, Lynn, but I hate it when I get a letter from you yes. or an email from you. So I don't know anyone who loves getting a letter from a lawyer. Yeah, well, so what I do for them, but you won't find it often, I must say, but just for my special ones, mm -hmm. I would type in the 
subject. This is a good letter (laughs) or nothing to worry about in this letter. Yeah. Well, you could ask your lawyer, hey, I'm feeling really overwhelmed at the moment and I'm really struggling reading your Mm. emails or your letters. Can you please write in the subject heading good news? Yes, or not. (laughs) Not good news. And if it doesn't say good news, then I know it's not good news. I think I'd say not as bad as it sounds. Not as bad as it sounds. (laughs) And a good lawyer will I mean, I do this for, used to do this for all my clients. If there was a letter from the other side, Mm. I wouldn't just drop it on the client and say, here's a letter from the other side. If it's going to be like a A a bombshell, I would give them advice and even sometimes draft a letter in draft. This, This is what they say. Here's what your lawyer thinks about it. And this is what I propose we send to the other side, what do you think? So, you know, maybe your lawyer can do that. If your lawyer is just sending you these awful letters on a Friday afternoon. (laughs) So that I guess you could say to your lawyer, hey, look, I'm feeling really overwhelmed. Mm. Instead of just sending me their attacking letters or something that's really going to upset me, could you please send me your thoughts as Mm. well as the letter and a potential what we should write back before you send it to me. Now, if you're acting for yourself, Mm -hmm. a way to sort of keep it under control, I guess, is to... Hang on, before we get to that, Uh, because I know that's that's actually... Number, number nine. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, so let's just get, so get your head out of sand, start reading the letters. Sometimes they're not as bad as they should be. And looking at money as well, I guess it's the same as being proactive, looking at your money. Yes. Look at your money situation. Cause that is probably one of the most overwhelming things for a lot of people is going, gosh, I've lost half my income or I've lost all the income because I wasn't the, you know, the primary earner or gosh, I'm going to lose some of my income because I'm going to have to help pay for somebody else. So look at your money. Yes. So, so that idea of the head in the sand, Mm. you know, I didn't open that letter. I'm not going to check the money because I don't want to know how bad my situation is. It doesn't actually feel good. No. It just keeps buzzing around the back of your brain Mm. that you haven't dealt with this thing. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, so there's lots of good reasons to be proactive. If you're really struggling to be proactive, go and see a counsellor, go and see your doctor, mm-hmm. explain your circumstances, get a maybe a mental health plan where you yeah. can go and talk to a counsellor and explain that particular thing mm-hmm. and, and it will help you get to a good space. And they might so be able to give you some strategies because yes. everybody's reason for not wanting to read it or look at it might be different, but it might give you some strategies. And mum, I used to sit there as a kid with those Band-Aids, which I was allergic to, which you is probably why it hurt to. more to take them off. And I would peel it slowly over days to get it uh. off, like so slowly. And one day you said, just rip it off, just rip it off. It just quick like a bed. And, and one day you just ripped it off for me. And I was like, well, I was relieved the minute you did it because I was in so much agony getting these bloody Band-Aids off. And that's the same thing. It's it, it would you rather the pain to be quick or very, very slow what an over awful days? Mother I am. <laughs> <laughs> but I was glad you did it because yeah. I was I couldn't do it properly. I wasn't gonna ever so just get someone to help you. Rip, I always, rip off the band-aid. I always say if you don't, then you're ripping off the band-aid one hair at a time. <laughs> I know. That's what it felt like. Yeah. All right. So so okay. definitely get your head out of the sand. Get some support. Get some support. Can. The yeah. next one, number four, the one we missed is set a goal. Set a goal. If you're overwhelmed, set yourself a goal and look at that. I think one of the quotes we put in the on the internet or Instagram and all of that sort of stuff last week was, if you're climbing a mountain, if you're dealing with uphill struggles, envisage the view from the top mm-hmm. while you're climbing. So with this, set your goal, write down what you want your orders to be. Yeah, more than that, where you see yourself mm. in, say, 12 months' time. Yeah. Is it in your own little place, mm-hmm. you know, with no no trouble, no money worries, knowing exactly what, what you've got, or is it that you're going to move back to your mum's and you're happy to stay there and just kind of imagine yourself free of all of this, and yes. that is your goal. Yeah, you've, you're free from the legal poopy doopy. Yeah. You've got you've, <laughs> you've got your own financial freedom. You know when you're going to have your kids and you can move forwards with certainty into the future. That's what you need to look at. I think, and that's what you need to know what your goal is. But but also knowing your goal, mum, I mean, like if you're completely overwhelmed and the legal letters are going backwards and forwards and today it's fighting over, I don't know, a storage unit and next week it's fighting over the cost of an artwork and uh. the next week after that it's this. And it's just going in a circle and it's mm. going nowhere. You can go, no, I'm not going to talk about this stuff until we've sorted out this. Yes. And this is what I need sorted out so I can no longer be overwhelmed and focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. And you're quite entitled to do that. Yeah. 
Okay. The other one that you've recommended, and it really helped me. Yes. And I know some people who listen to us do this. It's contain it to once a week. Yes, if you can. So there are a lot of people that are co-parenting with their exes as well as going through a divorce. So they're getting legal letters and they're getting messages messages from from their exes about parenting. And the whole thing could just be so stressful and overwhelming. What what are you saying? What's your tips on that? My tip is to set aside a time once a week where you deal with that. Mm. And you you when you get something like that and you know you're going to be dealing with it on Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock, then you haven't just, I guess you haven't just left it there. You've got a plan for it. You put it in its box Mm -hmm. for there and then your mind can be clear because that's a Wednesday problem and come Wednesday morning you will sit down and resolutely do all the stuff Mm -hmm. and you're containing all the poo (laughs) at one time. Yes. You know, and the rest of the time you keep clear because you don't want to live your whole life reacting Mm. to another person. You're you're out there, you've got your bright, shiny new life to look forward to. Mm. Um, and this sort of cold hand reaching out from your past can muck up every day if you let it. And and you might not notice it, but if you read a letter that is accusing you of something mm. or you've read a letter that is bad news for you and you realised it might make you a bit extra snippy. It Mm. might make you not want to go out and have fun that night and you might have had a party organised or you might have had a nice fun outing with the kids. And reading those letters has now, even though we've told you not to stick your head in the sand, has now caused you to be a little bit snippy and upset and and it, and it could taint your whole week as opposed okay. to going, no, I, I the kids will be at school and I'll be just home from work for the morning or something. I'm going to read it then. And I'll and give then myself I'll, a reward. I give myself some time to deal with the, how I'm feeling and by the time the kids come home, I'll be better and it'll be yes. great. So containing it doing it, like check with your lawyer first. Hey, I'm only going to read legal stuff on a Wednesday. Unless you put in the heading, it needs to be read. Yeah. And I'm not going to pay attention to it then. If you follow our course, then you know, we say get an email address for all of this stuff. So don't even, even look at your emails. Do you know, I heard a story about a lawyer who all of his letters to his clients, Mm. he used the very important button, you know, that red, red, exclamation mark. Oh my, yes, the urgent thing. Oh my gosh. And demanded a read receipt. Like that would freak me out. Yeah. So it's not sticking your head in your sa- in the sand mm. because you're actually seeing it, moving it to the Wednesday folder. Yeah. And you know you will deal with it on Wednesday and you have to, but you're not going to let it taint all Permeate your days. the rest of your days. Oh, that's a good word. Yes. Permeate. Yeah. Yes. Because it does. Even if you think you are the most well-adjusted divorced person in the world, it is going to affect you. Especially when they say something that isn't true. I mean, I think that what's so hurtful is if you've been with someone for a certain number of time, years, you may have had children together, you think they should know you pretty well. And then mm. they say this about you and you go, oh my God, mm. that he should know or she should know I'm not like that. How could they say that? I'm I'm honest, you know. Mm. And and sometimes if it's a real manipulative and controlling person, the very thing they know you pride yourself on, like your honesty mm. or something, they'll have a shot at you that, that tries to undermine that. that. Yes. yes, that's right. And I guess another thing you could think of if you've got a high conflict co-parent and you guys are going to just fight over the colour of the sky and they've written a message to you and it's not Wednesday and that's the day you're going to read it mm-hmm. and you're not doing a handover with the kids or anything, it's not urgent. If you wait the week to read it, that might limit like a week's worth of fighting, yep. maybe. Yep. As long as it's not urgent and it's not, the, oh, our kids are in hospital or something, and it's not a handover time, so they don't need to know a response immediately, then if it's fighting over something, why not limit that fighting to at least once a week? Yeah. Yeah. So that's something that uh, has worked in the past for people, but always, you know, make sure that you've got a system in place so that if it is urgent that you're going to know about it. And if your lawyer needs to really contact you, they know that you're not going to read anything except for Wednesdays. You know, on the topic of those lies that might come through to you Mm. that really upset you and can overwhelm you when there's so many lies, Mm. uh, sometimes you can just, instead of addressing each one, Mm -hmm. just say, you know, on Wednesday when you read it, oh, this is all lies. <laughs> Send it. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> and this is education only, so please speak to your lawyer before you write this is all lies. But we have done an episode on do I really need to respond to that? Yes, that's true. And that episode might help you if you're being completely overwhelmed. We've also done an episode called Bombarded with Legal Letters, and that as well might help take some of that overwhelm away. Mm. So go listen to those mm-hmm. ones because mum gives some great tips in that and some great responses. Okay, number Eight. I've skipped number seven. We'll come back to that in a minute. <laughs> Make sure your lawyer is somewhat comfortable. You're somewhat comfortable with them. So if you're separated or about to be, and you need to get everything finalised and sorted, but you don't know what to do next, or you're looking for a way to do your own divorce and settlement without spending thousands of dollars on lawyer, then you already know what you need to do, and that is to sign up and become a member of the DIY Divorce Blueprint. Empower, educate, and equip yourself with the legal know-how and the tools you need to get divorced or. De facto separated and finally set. Work through this course at your own pace without feeling confused, lost, scared or overwhelmed of all the family law legal jargon and processes. Let us walk with you through this journey and show you a better way. I've skipped number seven. We'll come back to that in a minute. <laughs> Make sure your lawyer is somewhat comfortable. You're somewhat comfortable with them. Yeah, you've got to be comfortable with your lawyer. The lawyer is the one who might be sending you those emails that yeah. make you feel <laughs> bad. So you want a lawyer with a little bit of empathy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I've noticed with uh, financial advisors, planners, accountants. I've changed my accountant and my financial advisor Mm. over the years and I didn't want to deal with money. And I see money and legal stuff as similar kind of head in the sand moments, right, and overwhelming. I didn't want to deal with it. And then I'd go and see these people and I really didn't want to deal with it because they're personalities or their explanations didn't make any sense, you know, and finally now I found an accountant and an advisor that speak to me in a way that I understand. They, they get my humor. I get their humor. They, they're kind and nice to be around. And now I'm not so afraid of money. And I think it's the same thing for lawyers because I did have different lawyers over the time, like, (laughs) but as, as I went through and changed lawyers, but in the same firm, but they, there was a different way of dealing with each one of them and different anxieties and issues came up because of the way, you know, they were personality wise. Yeah. So if you find a lawyer, I guess, that that triggers you or or they're just not gelling with you, you are going to be overwhelmed through your divorce journey. And if it's going to be a long divorce journey, which some people's are, that's not really going to be the person you want to hang out with for the next three years. If you've got a scratchy relationship with your lawyer at the beginning, it's not going to get better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's so a, that's it, a good if, point. If it's a good relationship, well, you know, then you've got a, a someone by your side who can help you through what you need to go through. Mm. But you don't need to add more aggravation to your day. Mm. So, you know, that's why these one-hour interviews, these usually they do a fixed fee. It's worth it. You're there to appraise them and they they can appraise you and see if it's a good fit. I remember uh, one of the judges, I nearly named one of the judges in the FCFCOA in Brisbane, who's a federal magistrate then, He gave a talk about clients to lawyers, you know, and he said, you know, not not all clients are clients that you want. Same as not all lawyers are clients, are lawyers that you want. Mm. And he said that he used to, when he was a solicitor, have someone come in, oh, I want to take her for everything she's got. Mm. I want to do this and I want to do that. And uh, he said, he used to say to them, you know, I don't think I'm a good fit for you. However, Mr. Such and Such down the road would be perfect for you. <laughs> and so, and I, I mean, I choose my clients. Yeah. You know, and. and uh, You're not choosing any clients anymore. <laughs> no, I know. But I've always chosen the ones I want to work with. Because yes. you don't want a mean, bullying person. You know, I had one, I want you because you're a pit bull. <laughs> I'm not. Yes. No. And so if you find a lawyer who shares your ethics, but, but you need courage. Is what They need to be brave. Mm. And same with your financial but It needs to be a brave lawyer who will stand up for you, mm. but not like wanting to be too aggressive because yes. it's just going to cost you money while they do their showing off. Yes. But I guess if you were an aggressive person and your lawyer wasn't aggressive, that you'd, would annoy you. You'd leave. You'd, you'd leave. go somewhere else. Yeah. Yes. So, so so, so the relationship you have with your lawyer during this process really matters because if there's a disconnect and your personalities or your your attitude towards what it is that you want to achieve in this process, if it's not aligned, then it is going to cause you some overwhelm. If they, like you always do say, don't get a lawyer that makes a mountain out of a molehill because yep. if you want to try and keep it amicable 
and the lawyer's gunning for a fight because they want to point score with this lawyer because they had some issue with Mm. them in last year. That's not going to help you. That's just going to cost you money. Well, some lawyers, I think they think to be a good lawyer, they have to be aggressive. Mm -hmm. And they'll, in my experience, they kind of show off a little bit in that initial appointment. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll do this or I can do this for you, kind of selling themselves. Yeah. You know, so uh, you'll know if they're going to be that sort of lawyer. But if you're having trouble reading legal letters to start with, then it only because it's talking about someone you're not keen on. Imagine if it's coming from someone you're not mm. not really gelling with as well. It just makes it all worse. And really when it comes down to it, Mum, a judge in the end doesn't make a ruling based on whose lawyer was more pushy. Well, no. It comes down to whose lawyer knew the law. That's right. And remembering with and the- And presented with the, it. Yeah. With, well, with the current pre-action procedures, the court re- actually says in this document that lawyers are not- are expected to are, no, they're expected to not be aggressive, but to be focused on resolving the issues. So there's a very fine line between being a pushover and saying, "Oh, you better settle this," mm. which we hear a lot, don't we? Yes. Um, and be and being sort of firm but not aggressive. Mm. No, the law is this, and and this is what my client wants. So yeah. yes, you, okay, yeah, it's tricky. Isn't so it? definitely, but the judge doesn't. The judges might might criticise your lawyer for being aggressive. Mm. If they see that the correspondence has been aggressive, there is a threat there that costs could be awarded against you and possibly your lawyer if they've inflamed a matter. Oh, Yes, so these new back, no, I haven't seen it happen yet, but I have heard of it happening in the federal court Mm. where if the lawyer was to blame, I actually have seen seen a costs order against against the client and the lawyer because of the approach they took. Wow. So there's... Yes. Wow. There's a difference okay. between being solid and, and a good lawyer a good and lawyer, just and being, being an aggressive, aggressive lawyer. Jerk. Okay. Yep. The next one, Mum, and I think we're going to leave number seven till last, so I've really mixed this up, but <laughs> number, number nine is always have a plan A or a plan B. Yes. So to take away that overwhelm, explain this always have a plan A and plan B. Yeah. Okay. So when you send a letter, say, for instance, to the other side or ask a question, then you're waiting to see when, what the answer will be. And if it's no, then you're like, oh, what if he says no? What if she says no? Then you you then wait. The, 14 the, days. 14 <laughs> days, the no comes back, and then you get into a tizzy wondering what to do next. So mm. you're wasting a lot of time. Better is to do this. You send a letter, and in your mind right at the beginning, you've got your plan. Plan A, if they say yes. yes. I'll do this. Yeah. Plan B, if they say no or don't answer, I'll do that. Mm. And so come the day, it's it really doesn't matter much to you whether they go yes or no. You know what you're doing next. Mm. It kind of keeps the ball rolling and keeps your power. If you don't do that and you send it and they say no, and then you're like, I can't believe he said no. I can't, this is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. What am I going to do now? This is so unfair. And you're emotionally in yes. a turmoil. You're not in the right headspace to write a response. That's right. Or, or make a decision or on what instruct. to do next. Mm. So you're all off in angry land or upset land or sad land or dismal land or overwhelmed land. But if you'd written the response of, okay, if they say no, I'm going to do this next or yes. tell your lawyer, okay, if they say no, this is what we're going to do. And we'll this do is the letter and we'll do it straight away. So yep. have the letter ready. And then you've looked at it without emotion mm-hmm. because you haven't had them do it yet. Mm-hmm. And then if they do do it, then when you'd, you'd be like, I can't believe you did that, send the letter. And none of that anger, none of that um, emotional maybe mistakes in decisions is is going to be involved in that plan. Yep. So plan A and a plan B. And I guess that same go for co-parenting. Yep. Uh, If you're sending them a message and you're like, hey, little Johnny needs to go to this birthday party, can you do it before you even send it? If it's high conflict and you're overwhelmed with it all the time, have a response ready if they say no, that isn't going to inflame the situation or have a plan. Okay, well, if he says no, I'm going to do this. Yes. And then when they say, come back and say no, you go, instead of going, I can't believe it, blah, 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 you just go, okay. And then you've got your plan. Yeah, because never... In the history of lawyering, I'm I'm prepared to say. Oh, man, well, it's a big never call. Never in the history of lawyering has a letter to the other side which says in us in essence, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> Mo- never has re- evoked a change yes. in a response. That's true. You know, so sometimes when you 
I can't that, believe you did yeah, that. Are you kidding me? It, and oh, are, are you good? Me? That's a good point. I, I definitely shouldn't have done that. And yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to kid you. I changed my mind. No, that's never going to happen. So don't waste your money doing it. Don't waste your time doing it. And don't look silly in court with a letter doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're paying for it. Okay. To do it. So, yeah. So just journal the are you kidding me, but don't yes. ever write it. Okay. In anywhere where it can be seen. And don't put it on social media. Okay. All right. Are we ever going to get to number seven? Number seven, which is our last one, even though we've just done the last one. Write yourself a, prescrip- a prescription and be proactive about your health. So when I say write yourself a prescription, I don't mean go and get yourself some drugs. I mean you are going through a really overwhelming, life-changing situation. doesn't matter which way you look at it. It's life-changing. And I think in any situation where you're going through something like this, you need to be proactive about your mental health. So I want everybody who's listening, if you've gotten this far into the episode, to write yourself in your diary once a week, one thing that you will do for you that you think will help you feel a little bit better about yourself. Fill your cup because to be fair, you're going to be running on empty. You're going to be overwhelmed. You are going to be stressed. You're going to be stretched to the max and your kids are still going to need you and your family's still going to need you, your job's still going to need you, you're still going to have to function. But if you have ever noticed, if you go get a massage or if you go for a walk or if you meditate or or find 30 minutes to read a book with no interruptions, it does change the way you look at things and you're less snippy, you're less stressed, you're less upset. I would really, really, really encourage every single one of you to write a prescription for yourself for next week to do one thing that really fills your cup, that gives yourself some love so that you can then deal with these battles and deal with this drama with a little bit level-headed. And if that means going to see a psychologist, yes, do that too, but do something else as well. Yes, something do nice. something nice for yourself. It doesn't have to cost any money. And if you can get someone to look after the kids, if you're single, in, single parenting, get someone to look after the kids for 30 minutes so you can go out and get some fresh air or read a book on the balcony, lock, like lock yourself in your bedroom for 30 minutes. Mm. Hide, in, no, hide in the cupboard and eat some chocolate. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's not really giving you Self, some self love, but no. but just try and think what can I do? Or book a, book a, an outing with a friend. Go go and have lunch with a friend. Touch base with some people that you maybe haven't spoken to for a while because maybe your ex has isolated you from them, or because you've been too busy with kids. I get it, but I, I just think. I really do think there's some power in taking care of your mental health and giving yourself some self-care that really does change the way you approach your divorce. Mm. And it does take some of the overwhelm away because you're a little bit less wound up. You're a little less overwhelmed. You're a little less stressed. So decisions that you make will be so much better. And, and it is something, Laura, I think that's wonderful. And, and that is something you can do for yourself that is not dependent on the answers you might get back or mm-hmm. the, where you're at in your divorce. I, th- mm-hmm. I think it doesn't matter where you are in that process. If you're prioritising self-care, mm-hmm. um, and I will emphasise to go and get whatever checkups you normally get done, don't leave them. Oh, my gosh, I did. I didn't get my teeth checked for two years and oh. then I ended up with a root canal. Oh, my gosh. So I just I went, oh, dentist, don't have time for it, not going to do it. It's too stressful. I just, I just, I literally just did not go to the dentist for two years And then ended up with a root canal. So go and book a dentist appointment, everybody. But but do you know what's odd? You were always at the dentist. I know. In that two years for the children. I know. I took the kids to the dentist. They never took me. Yes. I know. And and it could be even more serious. Yes. So keep up your checks. Yeah. Because the 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 new you at the other end of all this will thank you for keeping everything. Because root canals are expensive and look, (laughs) you know, lumps and other things that you might come across, you still have to look after yourself. So like put it in in your diary, a 30 minute time for you to do something for self-care. And now mum's added 30 minutes a week to check on your health. Yes. See a doctor, go to a dentist, get a skin check, get get your breast scan, get your pap smear or whatever else, prostate. I don't even know how that happens, but do that. (laughs) And and whatever else there is that you need to do, because you've got to keep functioning in your body. Yeah. I had a test on my heart years ago Mm. and I was so busy. I never went back and got the outcome. (laughs) And and the doctor said to me, I see you had a heart test. Oh, 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 what were the results? (laughs) 
<laughs> I was too busy to find I out. I forgot. Well, Mum, I think if it was bad, they would have contacted you. Well, you home. hope so. <laughs> Jeez, you better find out. <laughs> right. All right. Let's quickly just run through these mm. again. And then we're going to read one lucky person who's going to receive a free chat with Mum. Oh, good. So you can tell Mum all about the, the mental health scheduling that you've done as well if you wanted mm-hmm. to add that into your chat. So number one, take it. Take it one step at a time. Number two, know where you're going. Number three, be proactive. Number four, set your goals. So know your proposed orders or know what it is that you want to achieve and and don't get distracted by their red herrings. Number five, get your head out of the sand, which sounds easier said than done. So start reading the letters and start looking at your money. Uh, Rip that Band-Aid off. Number six, contain it to once a week. If you can, set your alarm, tell them that you're only going to read it once a week, but contain it. Write yourself a prescription and be proactive about your health and your mental health. Uh, Number eight, make sure your lawyer is that you're you're comfortable with them. Mm. And number nine, always have a plan A or a plan B, and that way your what-ifs will go away. You'll turn them into so So what's. Yeah, so... Thank you so much, Mum, for helping. I know this one was a little wishy-washy, but taking the overweight, the overwhelm, can really have a dramatic effect on your case. I think think it really can. Mm. So let's read a review from one lucky person. Today, Mum, you're going to read it out via Apple Podcasts. You can do it on Spotify as well. Uh, We also have polls on Spotify. We do a poll every episode, so we will add a poll up today for this one. Maybe we might put, are you overwhelmed in your divorce? Mm. (laughs) You can say yes or no because I'm not very good at these polls yet. I'll figure (laughs) out how to do better questions later. So, Mum, would you like to read out the lucky person? She said, great real-life scenario-based info. I have learned so much of a topic that is so often shrouded in mist. And myth. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much, she said. That's great. Thank you, Rosie. So we will definitely, uh, Rosie, email us at the divorce course podcast at gmail.com and we will send you a link where you can book in your call with mum and she can have a chat with you about your topic that might be shrouded in myth as well. So thank you so much, everybody, for the reviews that you do. It really does help. Uh, It definitely gets our podcast out there. We're sitting in number two in the how to in Australia Australia, and uh, we get up there in education every now and then in Australia. Australia as well, but also around the, the world because this this episode particularly is is helpful for anywhere in any country. So yes. we've got lots of lovely listeners all around the world. So hello everyone who's listening from America Ireland, and the UK and yeah, Ireland and UK, Sweden, New Zealand. All these amazing countries are listening thank to you. us, which yeah, is quite bizarre. <laughs> but to all of you, thank you for listening. And any reviews you give us does help push it out there to the people who might be overwhelmed, just like you. Yeah, thank and you, Mum, for the best, your time. guys. Thank you, Laura. Bye, everyone. Bye. If you found this podcast helpful, we'd love it if you could rate, review, and subscribe. By doing so, you are spreading the word to help someone else just like you. Lynn would like to remind you that this podcast is general advice only, and you should always get legal advice in relation to your particular situation. And remember that the Australian laws may have changed since recording.